Hi, I'm Kerry with Best of Us Investors. And it's not easy dealing in the stock market today. It's pretty tough to sit and watch your assets diminish and go away. Uh, but they really don't go away unless you sell them. And I think what's important to recognize is that the, the stock market is a breathing organ, and it responds to the environment it currently finds itself in and doesn't look much further than about 90 days into the future. And we have some questionable situations as to what are the next 90 days going to look like. Are our prices of goods going to go up? Yes, probably, because we have a broken supply chain and we had a disrupted supply chain and inflation is taking a hold. Are interest rates thus going to go up? Yes, most likely, and uh, they all continue to go up. Do we have some issues about employment and, and, and uh, people's salaries going up? Yes, Do as a result of the employment situation. Situation? Are unions looking stronger? Yes. So these are all inflationary um, issues. And then you add to that the turmoil that is going on in Russia, which I didn't really realize is only the 12th, 11th or 12th largest economy in the world. But yet they create some real havoc. Uh, their economy, in fact, is about equal to that of Texas. Just, I don't know, I hope Texas doesn't make these kind of moves. But nonetheless, the market is reacting to it. And, and those of us who are invested are losing a substantial amount of money. But we need to put this into perspective. And that perspective is we, we should not be investing for the next 90 days. We should not be putting money in jeopardy that we're going to need in the next 90 days. We should be putting money in a, a, a five-year perspective. And I thought it was crazy that Kathy Woods made that statement on CNBC this last week, and she got ridiculed. She got ridiculed that nobody invests with a five-year perspective. Well, yes, folks, we do. Some of us do. Some of us have the foresight to say our world is changing it is changing in front of us, and the stock market is not valuing the stocks based on that change. And so what I want to do in this video is give you some perspective as to how you can look back five years and learn what might be happening in the next five years. And in fact, what might be happening in the next two years that will afford you some tremendous opportunities to make money investing in the stock market. And I would add, just as a side note, in the real estate market. But we'll talk about that later. But first of all, I, I have to legally tell you this is not financial advice. This is my educated view and, and, and gauge as to what I think is going to happen. But let's get at it right after this. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. The whole premise of investing, as I said, is buy low and sell high. Well, recognize that right now you have an opportunity to buy low. Stocks are down substantially, some 20% in some cases, in some cases, some 60 and 70%. We had a situation I found on Twitter, and by the way, I'm very active on Twitter, and if you want to con connect with me, it's under, the, uh, my handle is Best of Us Investors 2020. I saw a, a tweet by uh, Tom Nash. I don't follow most um, uh, YouTubers all that closely, but he put up a tweet, and I do follow him on, on Twitter, that Kathy Woods had liquidated all of her Palantir stock, and he was asking, why would she do that? Well, Tom, her, her house is burning down, and if you've never been in a house that is burning, you need to know the first thing you do is take care and rescue those things that you 
value most, and that's going to be your spouse and your, your children and your pets. After that, you go and get your photographs. From that point on, you start accumulating your most valuable assets and allowing to burn those that you can allow to burn. She had to make a decision that, in fact, she had to let something burn, and that what she chose was Palantir because she felt that the future of Palantir was further out than some of the other stocks that she owns. That then thus then gives you some idea of how she manages her five-year perspective relative to current situations. And what I want you to know is the current situations, streaming uh, or increasing inflation, which will continue as a result of as we said, the pandemic, broken supply chain, uh, interest rates going up, and then the war, the market is going to correct. It is going to crash, if you choose to use that word, and that's a buying opportunity. So let's take this buying opportunity and put it into a five-year perspective. And to do that, let's go to my trading views, again, trading view charts, which I use extensively as one of my tools in my toolbox, and look at what the past five years can teach us about the next five years and potentially the next two years, where I think some tremendous opportunities are going to become available to those who have the foresight to look beyond their nose. Let's take a look at it. This is my chart on TradingView, uh, what I call a five-year perspective. I kind of got on this because of the, as I said, the ridicule of uh, Kathy Woods on CNBC this past week relative to her mentioning that she managed her portfolio based on a five-year perspective and how they said that was nonsense. Well, I think I can show you that it is not nonsense. And let's take a look at this. What I did was create a chart going back to uh, March of 2017 and track the stocks that I believe in very strongly. And you can see that as a result, Apple um, it returned 392%, Microsoft 345%, Amazon 255 Google 216 um, the Triple Qs 162 and because of uh, the latest um, drop in Facebook, uh, only about 50%. But uh, on top of those that stand out very strongly are uh, NVIDIA at 705 and Tesla at uh, 1353. And you can see Tesla got all the way up to where it was had been a 2,200% uh, 2, return. What I think is evident here is that if you work on a five-year perspective and you say, okay, who are the big, powerful, strong uh, behemoths that are going to do well? Uh, and that's your Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Facebook, you're going to expect somewhere in the neighborhood of um, a two to 300% uh, return over that five-year perspective. But then you see that when you bring it down to two years, that there are two categories, that being Tesla and NVIDIA, who, who really surged in, in that period of time, and, and particularly in the last two years, uh, and one is electric vehicles, and the second is artificial intelligence. So you can see that if you can identify those areas where the change is about to occur, you can get exponential growth. You can get some huge growth um, in electric vehicles and artificial intelligence. And it, it's interesting that they, they, the, the artificial intelligence kind of delayed or uh, didn't happen as quickly, but did get the surge uh, that, that uh, Tesla did. So my premise is, okay, if I know how the market works on a five-year perspective, and I can anticipate what the next Tesla and, and NVIDIA will be, I can get these 
exorbitant returns. And I think that's what Kathy Woods is looking at, is saying, what is going to be the next big change? And as I have said many, many times, uh, I believe it's health care. I believe it's being brought on by the, the, the coronavirus. It has pointed out the fallacy in our world that we don't have a health care system. We, we have a health care system, not a cure system. And technology and genome therapy and genome sequencing and protein therapy and protein sequencing has brought the medical field to where they understand what's going on our bo- in our bodies much more so than they ever have before. And this is going to facilitate these kind of surges that we saw in, in NVIDIA and, and Tesla in the coming years, okay? If, if we can do that, we know where to put our money. And I've shared that with you numerous times. Um, beyond that, then we have to look at what are the other areas of change that are going to show these kind of short-term, not short-term, but surges in values of companies. Well, we have obviously a uh, supply chain problem. We have to bring manufacturing back to the United States. That's only going to be facilitated by 3D printing and robotics. Now we have on, on the horizon the, the, the Russian and potentially a, um, a China-Taiwan situation. With those, we now have a security issue. And if you're looking for security, that brings up the cybersecurity element back up, and it also brings back the palantir and the and the the uh, ability to oversee what is going on in the world to protect us. So, I I just believe that you cannot compete with Wall Street on short term. You just can't because it is too reactionary and you don't get the information as fast as they do. So you don't compete with them. And last week through CNBC, they made a announcement that we don't look beyond our nose. We, are, we, we buy based upon what we think the earnings of the companies will be in the next 90 days, the next 180 days, and at the most 365 days. So don't play that game. This is, again, a chart that I create in TradingView. I believe it is one of the tools you have to have in your toolbox, and then others such as Seeking Alpha, where you can gather other people's opinions. Don't try to do this by yourself, and for God's sake, don't tie your future on the rear end of some talking head on CNBC or YouTube. Use them for information, but educate yourself to where you become the smartest guy in the room in the area that you want to specialize in. So let's let's talk some more about that. Okay, this is a drum I have been beating for the last year. Um, the, 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 or the last two years. Yes, this pandemic's been around the last two years. The most important invest in, in, event relative to investment opportunity in my 77 years of life happened in March of 2020, and that was the pandemic. And it pointed out, as a result of the pandemic, we became aware of the fallacies in the way our, we're running our economy, the way we're running our healthcare system, and the way that we're running our overall security system. As a result of that, we know we have to change from health care to health cure. And health cure is wrapped around some very simple, not simple, but very basic premises, genome sequencing, genome editing, um, protein sequencing, protein editing, artificial intelligence in pharma. That's all you need to understand. 
Uh, I'm going to give you some more in-depth understanding in the future, but that's what you need to know. These are the areas that are going to change your life more than anything else. You, your life was changed by the digital revolution, by the introduction of the internet. What's going to happen next is going to make that look secondary. Okay, so I've shared with you often enough what my portfolio is in that area of genome sequencing, genome editing, and pharma. The other area is we are vulnerable. Um, we, we have learned that we don't have a supply chain, that we, we farmed everything out to, to China and Mexico and, and, and India and third world countries, and now we got to bring it back. The reason we got rid of it was a cost of labor. Well, we still have a higher cost of labor than China and, and, um, and, and Africa and India, but we now have a choice. We have 3D printing and we have robotics, and that's going to become a, a part of our world. So we need to look at, to invest there. The other element that you just can't look past is we have a problem of global warming. And that global warming is caused in great part because of our dependence on fossil fuels. We've got to get off of the oil tit. We've got to get away from it. And we've got to go rely on what is available to us. I was just reading an article that there's a movement to, to capture cow manure for the what is it, the ethane gas. And it's actually, the government is coming in and making it less expensive than natural gas. And, and then the obvious one is solar power. That is going to be in our future. So my, my, my premise here is look to the five-year perspective. And in order to do that, look back five years. See how the market reacted to the, to the events, to the changes that took place over the last five years. And then on the shorter term, you know electric vehicles are going to be a part of our world, which means batteries, uh, which means on the other end of it, the, re the, the, the loss of fossil fuels, the oil, the coal, and you know that um, artificial intelligence is going to become a major player in every aspect. So now all you have to know is what's next. And that's what this channel is all about. That's what our Discord's all about. That's what Best of Us Investors is all about. And that's why I'm bringing you other presenters to help you broaden your scope to see past your nose, to recognize what Wall Street is all about. If you did not see the interviews last week with Kathy Woods and how these people reacted to her, Kathy Woods, I don't want to say it that way, but she's bringing us a new truth, and the old world doesn't want to accept it. This isn't the first time this has happened. They don't want to accept that the way we used to do things just doesn't work anymore, particularly when it comes to investing as an individual in the stock market. I cannot compete with a quantum computer. So I don't want to play that game. Don't you play that game. Get smart in the areas that you want to focus on, that you enjoy learning about, and then focus on it, and then become the smartest guy, and look beyond your nose. This is not a child's game. You can't listen to a talking head and win. You, you should know that now. You listen to some talking heads that told you to buy a bunch of fabricated stocks, and you lost your butt. So don't do it. Learn from your mistakes.
Okay. I hope I can help you. Uh, I hope I can give you some insights and then build your toolbox. Use YouTube just as a tool to educate yourself, to make yourself more knowledgeable. All right. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.